Since the dawn of the space age, humans have been sending missions to Mars. Some of them successful, many of them successful recently at first, with many failures. But it has always had a fascination for space exploration and is currently the most studied body outside of Earth. And no doubt for the future, it will continue to be so. There are parts of Mars that are more well known than some parts of Earth, particularly the oceans. There have been many, many spacecraft to study it. This is just the orbiters and doesn't even include the most recent one, MAVEN. There have also been a number of flyby missions, a number of rovers, including these three, which really is the fourth one because uh, there is uh, two of the Mars exploration rovers in the upper left. And it has also included some flyby missions. Now, this is some of the key events into Martian exploration. There have been other things, first missions that were attempted, a lot of missions that are not included here, but these are some of the key events in the ex exploration of Mars. First spacecraft to successfully fly by Mars and take a picture and return it to Earth was this spacecraft, Mariner 4, which passed by Mars in 1965. This is the very first picture that was taken of the red planet. And people saw this and they kind of thought, hey, this looks like the moon. And they were a lot more disinterested in Mars. They also found that it has a thin atmosphere, much thinner than was thought to have. And this is where you can see of the pictures that were taken. Very, very few pictures. Even our flyby of Pluto had far, far more pictures on its very first pass. This is the next spacecraft and was the first spacecraft to orbit another planet. This is Mariner 9. It was launched in 1971. It was able to successfully map about 85% of the surface of Mars, which you can see in this image. Most of what it was not able to was because the poles were in darkness during this period of time. It was a fairly short mission, and so they weren't able to see everything in the poles. The next missions of note were the Viking missions. The Viking missions carried the first lander to successfully land and take images and work for any length of time, although there had been one previous uh, Russian one that had landed and took a part of an image that doesn't appear to have been a real image from the surface of Mars. But these worked beautifully. There were a pair of spacecraft, two landers, and two orbiters that were joined with one each of each. You can see the lander on the top of the right image as it was bundled up and prepared for drop and on the left how it would actually be on the surface on the rest of the orbiter. These works phenomenally well and we were able to greatly increase our knowledge. You can see some of these pictures of the surface of Mars and this is a picture of the first complete orbital map of Mars that was done by the Viking orbiters. With this information, we were able to really get a good understanding of the red planet, even beyond the Mariner and, and at a higher resolution as well. Since that time, there have been a number, there was kind of a little falling out for 15 years or so. The Vikings was not able to determine if there was life or not and kind of felt like Mars had been there. So what we ended up doing is sending a new spacecraft much later in 1996, although we tried to send a few earlier. And uh, this was the Mars Global Surveyor. This was a very successful satellite. It lasted for about seven years in orbit of Mars. And it was able to actually identify some of the surface changes, as you can see on the image on the right. This is from the poles. It was not able to, only able to image the entire planet, but is able to do it at even higher resolution. The most well known image that comes from this orbiter is the MOLA image, which is the height map of the Martian planet. And you can see that the northern hemisphere is much, much bluer than the southern hemisphere, which created a great inequity that people have been trying to figure out and uh, has created a lot of interest in the planet as a whole. So this is the Sojourner, or the Pathfinder spacecraft, and you can see the Sojourner rover that's in the upper left right here. And they were able to do considerably more exploration as well. They landed, they were launched the same time as Mars Global Surveyor. 
and this extended yet another data point and the first rover that was um, successful for any length of time on Mars as well. You can see the little Sojourner rover here moving around on, on Mars as taken by Pathfinder and getting samples of some of the rocks in the area. We continued to send a whole bunch of missions since that time. Uh, since Mars Global Surveyor was launched, we have had, and since it arrived at Mars, we've had an active spacecraft, at least one, usually multiple spacecraft, uh, it continuing to this day. So for over 20 years, we've had missions that are orbiting and studying Mars. And today we have quite a number of them. This is Mars Odyssey, sent in 2001. This is this the Mars Exploration Rovers, which are Spirit and Opportunity, which were sent, which landed in 2004. You have the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which um, orbited in 2006. And of particular note, this this is has the highest resolution camera ever sent to another planet, and has enabled us to really get a good feeling for the very fine detail. And it's been able to help us to um, really study our landing sites to to know them well. This is the Phoenix lander, which landed on the surface of on the northern poles of Mars, towards the pole, and was able to do some studies as to to be able to determine water. And it did not survive for that particularly long. This is the Curiosity rover that's currently on Mars and still getting us great science. And lastly, this is the MAVEN mission, which uh, is continuing there to study the atmosphere of Mars. And well, truth is, is we do have one more that's on its way, which is the InSight lander set to be landing at the end of this year in, in 2018. And if all goes well, we might have a huge number of spacecraft and just constantly increasing this number of spacecraft we have orbiting Mars. The bottom line is, is for the last 20 years, we've been studying spacecraft, or we've been sending spacecraft to study Mars looking for water the viking missions they were enabled they enabled us to they tried to search for life but the truth is is we didn't even know enough about the basics of mars to begin to really search for life and now we're really starting to get a good grasp on that and future missions are going to be able to directly search for life as well so it's been long thought that humans might be necessary to make that determination and they may still be but we're getting far, far better in our science of Mars, and we really are starting to understand it quite well. And humans, of course, would be able to be the next big leap. You know, a human can walk as far as these in a day as these robots can walk in several months because they don't have to wait for commands to come back and uh, tell them what to do. Well, anyways, thank you very much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have about this or any other space exploration topic. Mars is in particular of note. Um, thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, keep on tracking.